Hello and welcome to the Stop Hunter's Guide to Technical Analysis. I'm Stephen Hode and I'll be guiding you through a series of 10 lectures over the next few weeks, um, digging in to a vast array of subjects and topics, hopefully to make you all better traders and investors. So part one today uh, on the rules you need to know and the big questions. Before we go on there, let's just have a look at what we're going to cover off over the next few slides. And even before that, let's talk about myself. Um, Stephen Hode, a professional trader, um, have been for 25 years plus specialising in commodities, equities, indices, FX, worked in banks, trading houses, hedge funds across the world, and am a leading technical analyst where I teach on the Society of Technical Analysts programme. Um, teaching professionals how to use um, the skills of technical analysis. Um, I write books, lecture at universities and much, much more. But for my time with you guys, I'm going to be helping you, guide you through the world of technical analysis. So yeah, let's get back to what we were going to look at over the next 10 sessions. Today is about rules you need to know and the big questions. Next week, essential chart knowledge, the basics, the bits you need to know before you can move on really to the more interesting stuff. Um, then we look at direct price analysis, price confirmation tools, volume, volatility, sentiment, some other ideas, Elliott Wave, that sort of thing. Um, then my favourite um, area, Japanese charting, give you a taster of what that's like. And then it's a case of putting all the topics together so you can actually use them as an effective tool. So then let's crack on now with part one, the introduction and the rules you need to know and some of those big questions that I get asked about technical analysis. Um, like I said uh, just a few moments ago, you need a good grounding in the basics before being able to go and develop and diverge into all the many branches of technical analysis. You've got to understand the raw basics of how it works before being able to effectively transpose that into your trading and investing. So today we're just going to have a look at why you should bother with technical analysis, um, what exactly is it, uh, the origins, um, and some of those rules that will get you started and as we do the, the different sessions that you can add and build into over time as you pick up the learning. And then I, over my time as in the world of financial markets, I've been asked many questions on trading and technical analysis, and I'm just gonna share a few with you. Um, hopefully we'll answer some of your questions too. So technical analysis, I've noticed over the last few years a general rise in the interest of the subject. And I think that's mainly because of advances in technology and the ease and well, the transparency of the topic now and the availability. It's every platform is it's very easy to get your hands on the software and become a technical analyst. But what you do with it is another thing altogether. But because of this availability, it's going to hopefully give you more control in your trading and investing um, and there, there's many reasons other than um, just this general increase in interest but from my own experience um, in technical analysis it's a massive subject and really you can go many many different ways and angles and still be successful and like I said from me learning the fundamentals of technical analysis it's led me into a certain style of um, technical analysis that I use is very different from other people so hopefully these topics and subjects can give you that basic uh, platform to start from and then go off on the tangent that you want to. Technical analysis also is a subject that has its uh, critics and skeptics um, many say it doesn't work May say it's a great a hindsight tool. Everyone has like I say, their own opinion on whether it works or not. If it works for me. I can't really complain about the subject, but I can understand why people would doubt that it works. But uh, you know, it says there I've worked with some of the best fundamental traders, some of the best quant traders, and some of the best technical traders out there. And what I've come to learn is that it's horses for courses. Uh, you find a subject, a topic, a method that suits your personality, your trading style, and you work with it. Mine's technical analysis mostly, but I do use some of those others. 
that's the blend you've got to find and there isn't a one fit all robot type trader that you can turn into a successful winner it's a game that you have to develop your own persona your own your own skills your own knowledge your own environment in which to succeed and you've got to explore it and find it you're going to have highs and lows in that time but eventually you'll come through and find a process and method that works so over the next 10 sessions hopefully it will inspire you to take take a deeper look into technical analysis and provide you with a starting point to go off to and develop those learnings and in the long run make you much better market analysts traders and investors why bother with technical analysis at all um, quickly summed up um, you'll make and save you money it takes away a lot of the bad psychology of trading and the mistakes that you can make therefore it creates discipline around a set of rules um, it will save you a lot of time uh, especially if you're a retail trader and you've got another full-time job then technical analysis does like I say save you bundles of time and also it gives you an edge that you can explore and find in your training which is you know, essential for success so there's five top reasons why you could use technical analysis and for me that sort of a no-brainer to to at least give it a try and have a look and how it works so what is technical analysis it's very straightforward it's a very simple topic it's not too mathematical um, not too complex it's basic set of rules build around some principles that if you learn them um, very easy to apply as we'll see in more detail um, I suppose the three um, absolute must you've got to learn when starting the subject are the pillars that it's built on if you buy into those then you'll buy into technical analysis so the first one is the market action discounts everything secondly the price uh, moves in trends and third history repeats itself we're going to go into those in a bit more detail as we go through the course but they're three key um, rules that you've got to buy into so who are the competitors to technical analysis in general terms i would say it's probably a fundamental analyst um, and what is that well that's all about value is something fair value um, under value or over value and you make a buy or sell decision based around that fundamental analysis takes a lot more time and effort to put together the downside is is that time and most of us don't have that sort of time it's harder to execute trade and risk management around that because it's less um, measurable less objective uh, but I'm not going to knock fundamental analysis it does work and I've seen many a successful trader um, that used it um, mathematic mathematicians also disagree with um, well actually they disagree with both technical analysis and fundamental analysis due to their belief in the efficient market hypothesis random walk theory and that they just say this sort of thing is self-fulfilling um, but in my career as I said both do work fundamental analysis and technical analysis some of the most um, successful richest traders I've seen use these approaches but the end, end game I suppose it doesn't matter what you use as long as you make money and that's why we're here to learn about how to make money and we're going to try and do it by using technical analysis so where does uh, technical analysis originate from well it's actually an ancient art and science that goes back thousands of years to Romans um, Egyptians and their market stalls um, where there's gold and commodities moving through um, the world and the trading around these uh, products creates prices and creates a need for analysis is it a fair price is it an overprice and this is where people started recording data and turn it into what we would call technical analysis in the more modern um, world of technical analysis we break it down into two sort of separate worlds of development one's from the west and the other from the far east in japan and we're going to briefly look at both of those um, areas so the japanese approach i suppose recognition goes to a guy called homer um, as the founder of the japanese approach to technical analysis back in the 18th century in japan 
and he introduced what we know as candlestick charting, which is really just a storytelling approach to looking at data to give the user an understanding of what's going on in, a, in this instance, a commodity, and it was rice that they were using uh, to be able to describe you know, the supply and demand features of that market. Um, other concepts such as Renko and Kagi uh, and Ichimoku are more recent. Um, until recently, I would say they were an alien concept to us, but the technology and software has brought them more into the mainstream and more usable. I suppose the main difference to the Western approach is that the Japanese style is more pictorial. Um, I suppose it looks more pretty. It's more easy to analyze, I think, in my opinion, rather than the Western approach. But as I said earlier, horses for courses, you can make your mind up. I like the Japanese style, but I do blend it with some of the Western approaches. So for example, here's a Renko chart. This is on the US dollar, Japanese yen. You can see it just turns into blocks and makes it just look very nice in terms of trends. You can clearly see when it goes up and when it goes down. That's how I like it. We'll learn later on in this series how to build those sort of charts. So over in the West, um, sort of just a bit earlier, maybe in the 17th century, a guy in the Netherlands called Joseph de la Vega was writing about technical analysis. And as Europe was expanding um, its trade, then countries all over Europe were developing marketplaces and forming domestic price tracking methods um, to keep an understanding of supply and demand of their goods moving all around the world now. And as we move to the 20th century, such techniques as point and figure in the United States becoming more popular. And over again in America, I suppose you could call the godfather of modern day technical analysis, is Charles Dow. You might have heard of the Dow Jones Index, that's the same, same guy. And his methods of measuring the US economy were then taken up by famous technical analysts like Elliott and Gann and Wyckoff um, to develop new technical analysis theory. And our friend uh, Charles Dow, he introduced the theory of trends moving in different phases, volume, confirmation, reversals, signals, and many more concepts which we're going to learn about. So let's move on to some rules that you need to know. Firstly, don't worry if you don't understand them fully at the moment. They're to be used in conjunction with the course of 10 parts, but I wanted to present them up front to give you an idea of what to look for when you come across them. And they're essential, they're not an exhaustive list, um, and you might have many others you know about, but for me they're a good, good 20 to start with. So remember that I said earlier that um, Technical analysis is built on three pillars. Well, these should be actually your first three rules that you, you use. Um, the first one, remember, is the price is the price. So the market forces have moved it to that point for whatever reason. Um, supply and demand are built in real time. And that, that's its um, advantage over fundamental analysis. You've got fundamental analysis. You've got to go and do all that groundwork, dig around technical analysis has got you to that point without having to do that. So that's a big time saver there. Secondly, history repeats itself. There's patterns in technical analysis. This is where, you, like I said, your mathematicians would say, well, everything's random. No, because I can show you thousands of charts where things happen over and over again. Maybe not exactly the same, but enough to give you an edge. And we've got an example here of US gasoline, um, just a typical example, and it just shows that in the first half of the year that the price of gasoline is bullish, and that's for a fundamental reason as people build up for the driving season um, in the summer time, and I suppose this might change as more electric vehicles come online, but for the moment it's just a typical example of you know, a, a fundamentally driven pattern that you can see through technical analysis. You can see this a lot more easily through technical analysis, which unless you, you're working in the oil industry, you struggle to see. So that's another brilliant um, advantage of technical analysis is the ability to see things quickly that would take experts many years of knowledge building to, to get to. So third big um, pillar, determine the trend and trade with it. I always use the Spanish Pamplona bull run as an example of this. Um, 
many of you may have seen it, the guys dressed in white, put red scarves around their necks, they open the gates and then they let the balls out. And if you're really stupid, you will run into the balls and you're going to get hurt. If you're clever, you will go with the flow of the balls, you'll run with the balls. That's like going with the money in the market, so you go with the flow of the money, it's that same process. Unless, of course, you've got a really cunning strategy to play the balls. Um, be clever, I suppose the rule there is you're never bigger than the market. Um, and should really, the, I suppose the rule is find out what the trend is, the flow is, and then go with it. And here's a chart of the S&P 500, and a great recent example of a price trend. So if put that up to anyone, why would you want to go short of that chart? At the moment, you're always going to be buying it. So after you factored in those three pillars, to your technical analysis rule set, we can now start to look at maybe a few more specific uh, rules, and these aren't in any particular order, um, but you may have seen them already, heard about them, I'm just gonna cover them off very quickly. So for the real starters in technical analysis, setting up your charts, um, you will remember that time is normally represented on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. Um, what many people don't realize is that a lot of those Japanese charts that we've talked about already and even some of the Western ones like point and figure disregard time and they just focus on price and this can be represented either linearly or logarithmically um, and the logarithmic approach I think helps maybe maybe the more long-term investor I see most charts set up um, linearly I would say um, another rule number five there Use chart types that suit you. Don't just go with the latest fad or one you think might work. I've used, I think over time, pretty much all of the charts and settled finally on Japanese style charts. Experiment with them. You know, there's so many different types as you can see from the list there. Um, I think you'll find that certain types suit your personality. Uh, number six, price. Don't use it on its own. Um, I think your results become more erratic if you just use it on. There are successful traders who just use it on, but I like to add other confirmation tools on top of that that are independent to price. Stuff like volume, open interest, sentiment tools, um, Dow theory, etc. Uh, number seven, also from my experience, technical analysis works better with more liquid markets. And what do I mean by liquid? Assets traded that have more volume behind them giving it more of a flow. Those that are illiquid um, can cause price shocks and are harder to trade over time. So what could you say, more liquid, in the, if you're doing, using commodities as an example, WTI, very liquid, lean hogs, uh, pigs, very illiquid and very volatile and can be more dangerous to your trading. Number eight, trend line measuring and drawing. We cover this off in a further session, but for now, all you need to know is that the trend is the general direction of a market or price of an asset, and there's trends within trends, they're called cycles, um, classified into short, medium, and long term periods. And you should build your analysis and trading around those periods. How do you measure what a trend is? Uh, if the price touches a, a trend line twice, that's a tentative trend. If it's three times, then it's a trend confirmation. The ultimate trend is at 45 degrees line and trend line should be un drawn under the price action for uptrend and above it uh, for the downtrend. And here we can see a little example. This is a Heiken Ashi chart, uh, similar to a candlestick chart on Amazon, the US company. And you see I've just drawn on a few trend lines to give you some ideas. You've got an uptrend on the bottom. You can see we've got three touches underneath and we've got some minor downtrends we've got some tentative ones and some confirmed ones in there as well but you can use those nicely to determine the flow of the direction of the stock or instrument you're trading and those changes in trend that are all critical for your trading if you want to measure how far a trend goes there's a loose rule called the measured rule um, we'll look into it again in later episodes, but it's just the length of the previous trend that can be used as a guide to add on to a correction in the price. We've got to number 10 there, the higher time frame chart carries more weight to your decision making. So I think this is very um, important and where a lot of traders 
fall over is they jump between chart time frames they pull up a chart they have a look in the 15 minute chart then the hourly chart they trade in the hourly chart and put their stops on the 15 minute chart and get taken out trade and wonder what's happened you've got to be consistent with the time frames you use in your trading and this is what this point is all about I take a top-down approach to my analysis so you start from the higher time frames that's where more of the money is moving the market so I might take a daily chart to start with and then take the next two lower time frames and that lowest time frame will be the one that I might trade in so the daily four hour one hour for example so if the daily trend is down the four hour trend is down I'm only looking for down opportunities in that one hour window so I put together a little table here of um, potential time frames that you could use now the blue box up there is your trading time frame so say for example you pick the 15 minute you want to be a 15 minute trader so that's quite fast paced for some what time frame should you use above that to try and glean the information of where the trend and the flow is coming from I recommend there the 60 minute and the 240 minute four hour um, charts to get that information from and that's a guide it's one I use um, it seems to work so we have all these different chart types candlesticks bar charts um, and they work very nicely on their own but it's about putting the odds and the probability on your side and to increase those chances of winning and I believe you can do that by adding in indicators and applying other tools on top of this information from independent sources and the many streams of different tools available to give you a different opinion that comes out with the same conclusion and this gives you a fabulous you know sort of confirmation tools that you can use and it, like I said puts the odds on your side of winning 12th rule there um, determine where your support and resistance levels are very important for your trade management and your risk management and there are many tools available for you to use if you're a fundamental analyst you're going to miss out on this and this could cost you in your trading so things like Fibonacci pivot points trend lines bands all sorts of approaches you can use but use them how do you get into a trade some people ask me and it's all about timing sometimes if you just plump yourself into trade you can wear a lot of risk while you wait for it to turn good um, it's all about the timing and fortunately technical analysis has created many tools that aid this things like the stochastic indicator RSI MACD they're all different paced but they'll all help you with your entry and exit beware of round numbers um, sounds um, obvious people are talking about the FTSE at 7000 or the yen at 120 or oil at hundred dollars about whatever it might be these numbers then become like magnets for um, price behavior and this is where they'll attract the stop hunters the money flow the smart traders and the losing traders um, and you don't want to be on the losing traders side so stay away from these round numbers unless you have a particular strategy on how to play them collinearity a key rule of technical analysis all that means is don't put different tools together that are based off the same information for example if you're using price um, the RSI and the MACD that's all based off the closing price information it's basically going to give you three answers from the same things mix it up maybe use stochastics that's based on average true range or something completely different volume open interest to give you that different viewpoint in to confirm um, what you're trading trading the rule of collinearity I said don't put uh, information indicators together based on the same uh, fundamentals divergence a great application for spotting markets when they go out of sync uh, when two indicators not confirming each other this can give you a clue to whether something's going to be bullish or bearish and if we look at the example you can see it very crudely drawn there if the indicator is moving upwards and the price is moving downwards this can often indicate a bullish price break and vice versa if the indicator value is moving down and the price is going up then that could indicate a more bearish environment how can you measure volatility um, well you can use something called average true range it's a standard uh, 
tool on technical analysis suite software. Um, this can help you in your trade management setting stops. Knowing how much the product moves around, the market moves, is essential. You know, like we said earlier, lean hogs or a more volatile stock isn't the same as a currency or something less volatile, maybe a FTSE 100 stock. So you've got to factor in the movement of the asset um, and you can do that with using ATR. You might not want to use ATR, also nowadays you can get actual historical volatility on your charts as well, which you can also use and convert back to a physical number that you can work out a stop from to give you that chance to stay in the trade longer. I suppose an, another thing that's often overlooked is that technical analysis, analysis isn't just about price action. Use it for risk management and money management. Um, it's going to save you losing the shirt off your back. Um, use it for stops, target setting, entry, exit. It can really, really help um, turn your trading around and it's often not used enough in trading and I find that if you spend more time on here you can instantly turn your results around more so than having a great um, getting in strategy it's about what you do with the trade once you got there technical analysis can help you there um, I use a lot of behavioral analysis in my trading and to actually put a measure around behavioral analysis is very difficult so how can you do that technical analysis you can plot the information into a nice chart you can see then trends use the same tools turn that into something useful and I said we looked at some of those other rules you can add alongside to as an independent source to verify and confirm what you're trading and sometimes people just as especially new traders are very jumpy getting into trades so our last um, rule you need to know on there is about the use of Heiken Ashi as a chart it just slows things down a bit more and makes trends and turning points more obvious so i recommend have a look into that if you're a bit jumpy a bit fiery with the trigger finger so 20 rules we briefly looked at there um, that hopefully like i said over the next 10 sessions of this one included we can build into our trading and be aware of be wary of use to our advantage there's many many other rules as you'll find out many many other concepts um, but I think that's just a good starting point to get you warmed up um, and get you going in your trading and investing. So the second part of today's lecture, we look at the big questions. And what are the big questions? These are the ones I suppose over time that I've been asked a lot about. Um, some controversial, some not, some practical, some not. But out of all the people I've taught and come across these are a typical set of questions again there's going to be many more that probably aren't here that you you know about or have talked about but again this is just to get or maybe even answer some of those questions that you have as before with the rules it doesn't matter if you don't understand these questions at the moment by the end of the 10 sessions I think you fully will and you can refer back to any of these slides and it will make a lot more sense um, so let's have a look at some of those questions now. Um, I break them into two camps, theoretical and practical. Not an exhaustive list, but I think they're some of the key ones that you could learn from. So let's have a look at some of the theoretical questions. Um, I suppose these are the more controversial ones. So the first one there, does technical analysis really work? Yes, it does. I, mean, see, I can't, can't say more than that. It works. For a lot of people, and a lot of people make a lot of money um, from using technical analysis. If it didn't, professional traders wouldn't use it. Um, Bloomberg wouldn't sell their terminals. It does have a very good use, whether you use it on your own as a standalone product or in addition with your fundamental analysis or behavioral analysis or something else. It's a good tool to have. Is technical analysis just a hindsight tool? Um, it's that I told you so it would happen type tool is this the case yes I can see how it could be argued that way but also no and where the strength of technical analysis lies is that it allows you to look back but if you have the skills and know how to use technical analysis you can use it as a forward forecasting tool um, and make it very effective in your trading can you make money using technical analysis because whatever I try fail Yes, you can. Um, 
a lot of traders do fail using many different types of concepts but yes you can make money using technical analysis I made a living from it um, so have countless others um, but you've got to understand that it's not a golden ticket to success you learn it develop it, it takes you know, a long time to build out successful strategies and trading methods so as I've mentioned technical analysis is a huge subject and we're only going to look at such a very small pinbrick of what is available out there so people ask me where do I specialize what's the best part to use and there really isn't a right answer to that question and it goes back to the horses for courses you've got to learn it get into it breathe it live it and then find what suits you and adapt it to your trading we've already talked about this one already what's best fundamental technical analysis I'm not going to argue for either of them they both work very well you can blend them together if you like and that's what I do for most of my trading into different markets foreign exchange I'm maybe more technical based uh, maybe equity is more fundamental based is a blend to be had there but as it says there don't be blinkered in just one approach explore and discover and find out what works best for you do you have to use technical analysis just on price no again the way software is developed you could take data from anywhere these days and turn it into a technical analysis tool um, as long as you've got the data set the world is your oyster so it doesn't just have to be on price can you automate technical analysis sort of a leading on from that last point yes you can now computer software programming whether it's python c plus plus whatever can turn your ideas and strategies into very automatable trading programs and technical analysis is very easy to do that from so moving on to the more practical day-to-day -day applicative i suppose approaches to technical analysis um, these are ones that I suppose affect the bottom line um, whether I'm winning or losing in trades so the first question there um, I use indicators like stochastics to trade and measure whether a market is overbought or sold I follow the rules but always end up losing the market never reverses at these points like the rules suggest and the trend simply continues am I doing something wrong no you're not doing something wrong the rules as they're laid out are I suppose very black and white and the world of trading never works in black and white you've got to put some color around it so i've used an example on the next slide this is diageo plc and if you see the yellow squiggly lines at the bottom you can see our stochastic you can actually see the top one there the price continues to to go on upwards as the stochastic has become overbought which would by the pure rules of uh, the stochastic and technical analysis would say you've got to get out but actually it continued on whereas the bottom circle was a perfect example of how technical analysis worked got oversold and it went up this is what makes trading difficult and hard to apply um, and this is why it's sometimes more of an art than a science and we're going to look into stochastics in a bit more detail and want further um, a series of lectures later on but I suppose the takeaway here is you've got to create another rule set around when the price gets into that zone so instead of just relying on the stochastic maybe add another indicator in there with some other input that verifies that's the right time to either buy or sell how does Fibonacci work so a lot of people think this is one of those hokum um, type tools but it actually does work and based off the Italian mathematicians um, ideas and it's very simple to apply onto a chart and because I it has taken on across a lot of the market and I suppose in some ways it's become self-fulfilling these lines now give you great support and resistance points and it does work and like I said we're again in a later episode I'll explain how you do those points uh, but for the moment let's just have a quick look at an example where's the S&P 500 I've overlaid a quick Fibonacci line on there and you can see where key support and resistance lines are hit I haven't deliberately drawn on those other lines that's how they're calculated and you can see actually it does give you some good 
levels in what to come in and out on or put your stops around. What time frame should I use to analyze and trade in? Really, it could be a lifestyle question. How much time have you got? How, what personality you are? Do you suit faster trading or slower trading? So again, there's no one right answer. It's what's in your trading plan, what you want to achieve, aspire to, what you suit, but you must be consistent in whatever you choose. Don't jump between just to try and think you're getting ahead of the market. And that's when it all ends very nastily. Do patterns really work or are they just made up to make charts look interesting? Things like triangles, flags, pennants. They sound very catchy and yes, I could see why you would doubt them, but I always answer this question with a question. Try and translate what you're seeing. The actual triangle or pattern like that is actually describing the volatility in the marketplace maybe coming off or expanding. There's actually a story behind that picture. So maybe the names are very flamboyant, but actually the use of the tool is giving you a very practical insight into what's going on in that asset that you're trading at that time. And here's an example of WTI crude oil um, I've thrown on a few examples there. We've got heads and shoulders. We've got a double bottom, a double top, a triple top. It's not an exact science of drawing on. Um, there's no must rules um, for you know exact line drawing, but there's a general, like I say, generic rule set that you've got to apply. And then the beauty of being an analyst is it allows you your discretion to decide what you think is the conclusion to your drawings. What are the most common type of indicators used? There's some pretty common fav favorite ones, pivots, RSI, Fibonacci, stochastics, moving averages, and MACD. I said cover the, the pretty generic um, suite of populars at the moment. Um, candlestick patterns, what are the most popular? Uh, there's literally thousands of different combinations, different lengths of combinations. And I'll probably only use a handful in my trading we're going to look into some more of these patterns later but on this slide I've just got a couple of my favorites dojis are great indecision turning point candles there on the left and on the right something called evening star morning star patterns which are good reversal uh, point chart patterns how do i know if i'm in a trend or reversing when is a trend not a trend there's some official rules when we had talked earlier about two and three touches when they're broken um, there's some indicators that we can use. You can use moving averages to confirm or deny whether you're in a trend or not in a trend. And a lot of this though is very, very discretionary um, down to your own analysis. What types of charts work best? Um, again, there's no answer to this. It's what you like, bar charts, I can actually, Renko, it's what suits you. I heard technical analysis can be used for trade and risk management and help me stay in the game. We've touched on this earlier. Yes, it can. It's overlooked. It shouldn't be. You should spend more time on this topic. Um, be, make it part of your trading plan. Use technical analysis to get you there. Um, it'll give you a clear rule set what to use. So they're just some of the questions I get asked. There's bound to be more that I've missed or ones you've thought of. Um, but hopefully, you know, they've got you going. They're all million dollar questions. They all can make and lose you money. Keep asking those questions, keep thinking about it, keep developing, keep using them, and they will help you grow and become better technical analysts. So I hope this brief look into technical analysis has whetted your appetite um, to join me further in the oncoming episodes. In the next part, we'll be looking at charting essentials, um, things you need to know from the ground up to let you build out and flower as successful traders and investors in the technical analysis space. In particular, next week, we'll be looking at line charts, bar charts, candlestick charts, some other different um, newer types of chart and market breadth for you stock traders out there. So thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to you joining me in part two. Uh, essential chart knowledge, the basics. I'm Stephen Hode, and if you've got any questions, you can email me at the information there. If not, I look forward to you joining me next week. Thank you.